politically incorrect. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me report the news to you. That's what you're here for. It looks like things are becoming a little clearer with finding the uh, terrorists who did the uh, horrible bombings there in Africa the other day at the embassies. Two groups have taken responsibility. One is called, get this, the Islamic Army for the Liberation of Muslim Holy Sites. The other group is called, the other group is called the Army for the Liberation of Islamic Shrines. I'm not kidding. It's a little hard to tell them apart. The, the second one appeals to a slightly younger crowd. Uh, they call themselves the Middle East terrorist group that zigs. I don't know. That's... And you know, not everybody's in lockstep on this. It seems like we would all condemn this, but for some people, it's a little tricky uh, because it looks like the people who did the dastardly deed are Islamic terrorists, but most of those killed were Africans. Uh, so today, cover his bases, uh, Louis Farrakhan denounced himself, and, uh, um, well, now in the uh, Washington soap opera, President Clinton had one victory and one loss today, as usual, uh, the victory was his lawyer has permission to view Clinton's videotaped deposition in the Paula Jones case, this is important, I want to remember what he said, uh, and if you watch Clinton's videotape deposition, uh, it, and, and you play at the same time Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon, <laughs> it looks like Clinton is telling the truth. It's really <laughs> terrific. Yeah. <clears throat> now, on the bad side, Ken Starr's grand jury continues, and today he had on the stand Harry Thomason. Now, Harry Thomason is one of Clinton's close friends, also a TV producer. Uh, he is the man who produced Clinton's inaugurations and also the show Designing Women. And uh, it's true. No, that's true. Uh, and Coach Clinton. And right now, Harry's working on a, a new animated short explaining the sex scandal to kids. It's called uh, Fun with Dick and Stain. And. <laughs> and finally, finally, how many are into the uh, ballooning? Because I don't understand this, but every, like, three months, there's some millionaire who tries to go around the world, never been done, in a balloon. Well, Steve Fawcett is the latest guy to try this. Another millionaire with a balloon. I guess you have to have a lot of money to buy one of these things. <laughs> and it's going to be the... He's about halfway now, and they say he might be the first one to make it. It would be a special record because he has also twisted his balloon into the shape of a dog. So, <laughs> anyway, thanks for coming. It's all been satirized to us. Panel. She is a law student from Trinidad and Tobago and counts among her recent achievements being the current Miss Universe, Wendy Fitzwilliam. Wendy. <laughs> Hello, young lady. Nice to meet you again. Yeah. How are you? He is a controversial author and nationally syndicated columnist, Cal Thomas. Cal, well, nice how are you? you? Nice to see you. Boy, I feel short. <laughs> He'll be at the Westbury Music Fair August 22nd in Billy Crystal's new movie, Analyze This, the King of the Belly Laughs, Pat Cooper. <laughs> Pat, how are you? Good to see you again. And finally, an actress and model. She plays Fancy Monroe on the Jamie Foxx show, Garcelle Bouvet. Hello. Hello, gorgeous. How are you? How are you doing? Good to see you again. Okay. <clears throat> Well, as this uh, soap opera continues to unwind in Washington, uh, other people seem to make comments about it. Now, Patricia Ireland, the head of the National Organization for Women, I'm sure you're familiar, said yesterday that Clinton, she kind of put him on warning he should not try what they call the nuts and sluts defense. 
which basically is what she's accusing the president, and as many have, of doing in the past, which is any woman who comes forward is either labeled a nut or a slut. <laughs> My question is, what if the person is a nut or a slut? <laughs> Well, well, I think they'd have to be to fool around with Bill Clinton, wouldn't What's you? That? I said they'd have to be to fool around with the president. I mean, given the, given, the, given, the, given the record of what happens to these women, I mean, here you have Harry Thomason coming to town to coach the president on how to tell the truth, including body language. If there's anything Clinton doesn't need help with, it's body language. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Very good point. The whole country is concerned about this man getting a side order. What is the difference? <laughs> Leave the man alone. He let him and go to hell and take care of him. <laughs> I mean, here's our society today. I, uh, we understand that, that men marry men, women marry women. The society is all <laughs> going the way they want to go. Here's a president. He had a side order. Everybody's going, oh my God, oh my God. Everybody had a side order out there. A lot of them don't talk about it. Yeah, but I had a side order many years ago. It's nobody's business. <laughs> it is now. Yeah. Yeah. It is no, now. I, but you know what I'm I saying. Know. It's terrible. I do. He's a role model. He's the president of the United States. It's not just about sex. It's did he mm. perjure himself? Well, what happened to Kennedy? This has been going on for years. Washington. Everybody had a side order. Trust me. But trust what me. What is amazing about this this entire thing? I mean, I'm an outsider, a Trinidadian looking in, and I can tell you the outside world's perspective is that. Is this that important in that is the fact that, that the, the President of the United States of America, the fact that he might have had an affair so important to place so much emphasis on something like that now when there's so much else happening in the world and even here in America right. that Americans should be focusing on. Touché. And even if you're looking at the moral right. issue, I think uh, sensationalizing it and glamorizing it and having Monica every day on national television right. with a beautiful bouncing hair in and out of court. <laughs> Seriously, isn't what you want this American, the in, uh, American youth to be bombarded with on a daily basis? But if someone no, might... Um... <laughs> well, I'm glad we all got that off our chest. <laughs> if I may uh, see if anyone wants to answer the question, however, which is, if your like presidency yeah. is on trial, do you not have the right to point out if a woman is nutty or slutty? She's nutty. I don't think she's slutty. She's nutty. She's human. She's not a president. She said, let's get it on. He got it on. That's it. Now, to say, now, what hurts me is to say, now she saves the sperm. That's a slut. Well, that's a slut. I think it's one thing if you're going to go, if you're an intern, you're going to go work at the, at the White House and you're going to take knee pads, then you're considered She's, a slut. <laughs> she mean, said that, that, she said that, you are correct. Slut, but I think it's a little nutty if you have sex with someone and you don't get the dress dry clean the next day. I mean, what are you holding on right. to that yeah, for? Isn't, well... Uh, you know? What are you uh, holding I mean, that for? Yes. Yeah, the dresses. courts are always talking about what a reasonable person would do. Would a reasonable person save a stained no. dress, send it to their mom? Mm. No. I mean, does the president not have the right to bring these things up? Yeah. taking bonding yeah. a little too far, don't you think? Taking what? Bonding a little bonding. too far. You know, in my day, Bill, oh, growing up, if you, your... got a, yeah, if you got a stain on a dress, you take it to the cleaners. Now it goes to the FBI crime lab. There you go. <laughs> well, don't boom. It depends um, on who stained it, though. I'll leave the comedy to you, I think. <laughs> All right, um, we'll take a commercial. We'll be right back. Politically Incorrect with Bill Maher, brought to you by Visa. If you're planning to be in the Los Angeles area and would like free tickets to Politically Incorrect, Call 213-852-2655. All right. Um, Garcia, you mentioned role models, and I yeah. have read more than one column in the last two weeks about the deaths of, okay, Bob Smith, Buffalo Bob Smith died, and Roy Rogers died, and Sherry sure. Lewis sure. died. Yes. They all Robert died. Young. And Robert Young. Yeah. And even Alan Shepard. I mean, uh, here was one of the original seven astronauts. These, these were people who carried uh, as a sacred trust something good and wholesome and moral. 
television was a welcome guest in our home. When I was growing up, your parents could sit down with you and watch it. Uh, now they have to take the mute button to the news. There's so much garbage on. Yeah. But these were, these were men and women who really represented something good and uplifting and wholesome, and you wanted to be like them. Well, maybe not like Howdy Doody, but... <laughs> Yeah. Right, but I mean, the, the, what I've read from people is sort of saying that we don't have any of that anymore and we'll never see their like again. It's over. Uh, what? It's over. Kimo Sabi is over. The Long Range is over. It's over. Face the facts. This uh, is the thing so today. So what do we do? <laughs> That's what the thing what today. I never thought it was it's on. It's got to start from the over? family, the Absolutely, mother and father. I agree with when that. When that kid is born, shut up and keep your mouth shut. That ends it. That you ends it. You can't do that in the 90s. You know what happens? <laughs> they don't pay attention. <laughs> You know, the amazing that. thing, though, Bill, is that the shows but, that are touched by an angel, for example, in Promised Land on CBS, know, are doing please. very well in the ratings. Well, you know, the critics and some of the other folks can knock it, but the people are watching it. Even in reruns this summer, it's in the top ten. So what's the message there? People will be attracted to good so stuff. So is Jerry Springer. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. So, yeah, that's scary. You know, that's... Uh, please. Plus, well, if well, these... prove something, Bill, what that happened? I think uh, the, the studios here, etc., have a responsibility to the people to give them good entertaining stuff that is good generally. <laughs> no, seriously, you will look yeah, at it. You are from another country. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> no one will take a You're, like that. <laughs> but in Your mind, ideas are very amusing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, Touched by an Angel is a very popular show. Look at Michael Landon and how very popular he was yeah. for so many years and yeah, continues to be. The man is dead and he's still wildly popular. That says something. If there's more of that kind of thing to look at, people will tune in. Sometimes when I'm waiting to look at a particular show, I look at, like yours, for example. <laughs> well, I look at any model. garbage yes, that comes absolutely. on yeah. before. Any garbage kind of thing. that comes <laughs> on. <laughs> no, seriously, well, people do I think consume whatever you give them. Yeah. So I think you have a responsibility to put some sensible programming well. out there. They oh, should right. oh, well. There should be sensible program, but at the same time, people want to see sex and drugs, but we have to find the right time to show that. And I think role model starts not only in the home, but also at school. I mean, the kids are at school all day. They come home, the parents make them dinner, get them ready for bed, read them a book, and they're in bed. So they don't spend that much time with parents that I think we need to start in school in terms of teaching kids, but not just the academic else, stuff. has to be but, built on. But yeah, school, no, yeah, relationship. There's no schooling today, excuse me, there's no schooling today like there used to be. Well, that's if what I we turned need to around and my father said, I said to my father, the teacher hit me, why didn't that teacher kill you? <laughs> You are totally different. No, you're different. You're I have totally common sense. Different. I got one week high school. I didn't go that week. Remember that. But I'm on this show. Here's a man with no education. I'm talking to brilliant people here because I have common sense. And that's what this country don't have. We're in a nap. We're nappy. We got to wake up and smell the roses, smell the coffee. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know where to go. Oh, well, right. Uh, who could refute that? But I want to ask all these guys who are saying in these columns that, uh, you know, Buffalo Bob and Sherry Lewis and Roy Rogers are such great role models, but they talk to this generation that's into sex, drugs, and rock and roll. So if they were so great at guiding them, how come they turned into these people who like all the things that you hate? Well, that's a very good question, a very good point, and I wish I had the answer to it. But uh, <laughs> bas basically, you know, it wasn't their responsibility to force people to turn out all right. It was simply their responsibility to present the evidence for turning out all right. It's still a choice. Uh, when we hit the 60s, uh, there were other forces that came about, materialism, the breakup of the family, uh, both parents working if they did stay together, and a lot of other forces, but people still had a choice. So you Most wanted of the boomers made the wrong They're great role models if the Wait. kids came out okay, but oh. they didn't, so they're smart. No, not, ne <laughs> <laughs> no, because no, not necessarily. They did the best they could. I think on, on the, uh, our youth gaining their, their morals, etc., from television, and that shouldn't be. That's the parents' that's exactly. responsibility right. primarily. Mm -hmm. And not because the mother's out working now necessarily, that means that there should be a breakdown of, of family values. Our men have to now realize that the role of women has changed. It's no longer changing. It has changed. And deal with it. We need you there to support us at home. Sometimes, if we are not there, you have to be home to help make dinner. You have to take an active part now as a man in raising the children. You're no longer the breadwinner. I you just make the money. In quite a few cases, that's... Okay. This is I, I've got to win some bread right now. Oh. I'll be right <laughs> Okay.
Okay, uh, a lot of people are up in arms about Janet Reno for a lot of reasons, but one thing she did recently was she decided not to interfere with Oregon's new assisted suicide law. Uh, and that law, I think, is the only state in the country now, you probably know better, where doctors can legally assist yeah. someone if they want to die with dignity. That ought to, well, you know, that's one of those catch words, death with dignity. Everybody's preoccupied with death now. First they, first they uh, establish a right, and then they've gone beyond that in Oregon. Now we're into an entitlement. They're actually people who want taxpayers to right. subsidize them killing themselves. Whatever happened to the bridge or the head in the oven? I mean, now we've got to do it with a federal Well, grant. I would agree with you there. Right, if you can't kill yourself without the Absolutely. government, you should die. <laughs> But some people don't have the absolute wherewithal to okay. kill themselves. They need a doctor to help. And I don't understand why anyone would want to stop them. If you're especially... Well, if I, I think if you're terminally ill, if you're really in a lot of pain, and the family, right. everybody's talked about it and they've all agreed, but I think if we start letting people decide they want to die at any time, then we're in trouble. The patient is their own worst you know? Once you cross this line where doctors become killing agents, I hate to bring up the Third Reich in Nazi Germany, but this is what Hitler did. You took the extreme cases. You took the retarded. You took the gypsies. You took the physically and that mentally handicapped. That is such a preposterous and then, no, comparison. No, not if, you read the, is... not if you read the literature, Bill. They got them to do the extreme cases. Then it became easier to do the so-called easier cases. That's a state yeah, who wanted to kill people. Yeah, well, it had to is... start in the medical community first. They had to give permission to the state to do it. And that's what the debate about is, in the, is about in this country. Does the state have a right and an obligation to guarantee the right to live at all uh, areas of life, at all extremes of life, or is there a moment What about where the people? Don't they have the right to yeah. decide when Absolutely. they want sure, to end but there's their a difference life? Between, Isn't that... Yes, but there's a difference between my deciding I don't want any uh, extraordinary efforts made to preserve my life and saying I want a doctor to exterminate it now. That's it's a very fine thing. line. No, it is. It is the same no, thing. Doctors it's a bunch of semantics. What? No, it's not. Semantics are very important in this debate because if the doctor becomes a killing agent at the extreme, once the principle is established that it moves quickly back to other areas that are less extreme. And the reason I pointed out the Third Reich is that's so, exactly what happened there. So are you going to be killing people for dandruff? That's your, pr that's, it's the well, slippery slope part. You know, I hate that slippery, that slippery slope argument. I'm so tired of it. If people do A, they're going to do Z. It just doesn't... But there's a truth, though, to some extent. Once you, the legislature gets involved and you legalize something and it seems to say, make it, uh, to appear to the general public that it's okay to do that maybe and then you desensitize people to the value of human life right. it could have a domino effect it, it could. has i think already in america and in, in, in several other uh, areas of of, of of human life like sure. the whole abortion issue and that kind of thing but anything just, could have a domino effect you know you drink so beer you could become a junkie stay out of it <laughs> let, but let, let, steak, you could become a but cannibal but we don't stay out of it <laughs> then okay what? <laughs> Why doesn't the government trust the people? The politicians always say it when they run for office, we have the wisdom of the people. The w but then when they do something like that, then suddenly the people aren't so wise. Well, I think Bill Clinton has proved that he doesn't have the wisdom of the people, wouldn't you say? What do you mean? Well, he's getting in there singing in the Oval Office, baby, baby, get down on my knees. <laughs> Cal, I thought you were going to leave the joke yeah, for Mr. Exactly. Cooper. Well, I <laughs> <laughs> when you come from Washington, every day is a joke now, Bill. Right. Unfortunately. Well. I desensitize people, and that's an area that uh, the legislature should not really get involved in. Yeah. Who shouldn't get involved in? You. Uh, that's right. You should. <laughs> no, you the should government cause... shouldn't get involved in, or the doctor shouldn't get involved. In? The the government should not get involved and it shouldn't be a matter of if you want to do this and right so you leave really it between the patient it, and his and doctor is that what you're saying then yeah. you're for yeah. assisted suicide no i'm not really for <laughs> <laughs> assisted suicide either because where i come from uh, that's absolutely taboo unacceptable right you know uh for me to deal with that just that concept that's something way out there for me i can't even understand how it's gotten to the point in america where we are talking about government funding for assisted suicide. Right. We are dealing with human lives. Right. Okay. Well, you I got to take a commercial where the network personal. will kill me. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, we uh, mentioned the wisdom of the people. Clinton's poll ratings are always very high since the scandal. Does that indicate that the people are... Very obvious. This country wants a president that looks good. They don't care if he's a stupid, an idiot. I want a president with a scar.